For it was through him that everything was made, whether spiritual or material, seen or unseen. Through him and for him also were created power and dominion, ownership and authority. In fact, every single thing was created through him and for him. He is both the first principle and the upholding principle of the whole scheme of creation. And now he is the head of the body which is composed of all Christian people. Life from nothing began through him. And life from the dead began through him. And he is therefore justly called the Lord of all. Hallelujah. Now this is Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I'm trusting God that even as the heavens open, it will release more and more of the knowledge of Jesus to us. When we are praying for the unity of the body of Christ, there's nothing else that can unite the body of Christ except Christ's life. In fact, when you see the prayer he prayed in John 17 that Sister Shade was referring to, you see that it was, it was pointing at the fact that let them become one as me and the Father are one. It is by his life. It is Christ in us. Christ in you, that is the hope of the glory we are talking about. Let me tell you that the unity we are praying for is not a unitedness. It's not a organizational activities. It is not all those things. We have to preach Christ. We have to point men to Christ. They have to see Christ as the only reason why we are alive. And that's when we will see the glory of God breaking forth in our generation. Now, I want us to move quickly out of that passage. I want us to go now to verse 20. Maybe as you read from verse 19, 20, 21. As I read that, then we're going to jump to verse 26, 27. For it pleased the Father that in Him, in Jesus, should all fullness dwell. It has pleased the Father that in Jesus should all fullness dwell. Excuse me. If there's anything you are looking for, you find it in Christ. And if you are not coming to Christ, there is nothing anywhere else. If you are not in Christ, my friend, you are in crisis. If Jesus is not the Lord of your life, if you have not connected with Jesus, you are disconnected forever. Please let it be known. Jesus is the is both the first principle and the upholding principle of the whole scheme of creation. Actually, another scripture said, it is in union with Christ that all things are held together. If Christ is not there, there is no question. So when I see nations throwing away Christ out of their out of their system, they don't want Christ to be preached in their school, they don't want Christ to be mentioned in their politics, they don't want Christ to be mentioned anywhere. I want to tell you, those nations they are nose diving into confusion. They are nose diving into problems. Maybe because you think they are very prosperous on the outside. You think that they are doing well. They are not. I've traveled up and down. I've gone from one place to another. And I've not seen anything attractive. Maybe because that's, that's my own eyes. I know some of you have seen big, big buildings. But I see men and women that are wretched. I see people that are very, very empty. I look at their faces and I say, oh God, this man is suffering. This man has no hope. Eh? Some, all they are living for now, when they have got all that they have gathered together, it just to be sightseeing here and there, sightseeing here and there, because there's no hope, there's nothing to live for again. Many don't have families. Their marriages are scattered long ago. So they are living anyhow, recklessly. And they want that now to, to, to be imposed on the rest of the world, because they miss the force that go. I mean, that put everything together. Don't be ever ashamed of preaching Christ. Don't be ever ashamed of pointing men to Christ because it is only by Him 
that all things are held together. Any nation that turns against Christ, that nation is going into crisis. If they don't go immediately, you will see that they are decaying and they are falling into confusion. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, and he pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And that by him, by him, to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Let's know that reconciliation is only possible by Jesus. There's no way by which any soul can be reconciled back to God if it is not by Jesus. It can be by Hindu, it can be by any other prophet, it can be by any, no, no, it can't be anywhere. If it is not by Jesus, there's no reconciliation. Because there's no remission of sin except by the shedding of blood. And it's not the blood of bulls, it's not the blood of goats. It is the blood of the sinless Christ that God has accepted for the reconciliation and redemption of souls of men. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. In his sight. I wish it were possible. You know, I was just thinking about those brothers that they were just writing this to as a follow-up letter. I was wondering, if I were in their discipleship classes, if I were in their Bible teaching, I don't know how much they would have said, because it's just a follow-up letter. And look at the issues that God is raising here. And when you go among our brothers and sisters, they are completely ignorant of the issues of Jesus. They know everything else. They know about the latest car in town. They know about uh, politics. They know about the man of God. But they don't know about Jesus. They don't know Jesus. May God help us. This opening of heavens that God is promising, and he said, hereafter we shall see, my expectation and my hope is that it will be Christ. Christ magnified. Christ glorified. Christ revealed in all the nations as we go from here and there in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's now read finally verse 26. Now, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Him we preach. I want you to see that they were not preaching topics. They were not preaching sermons. They were not preaching, they were not preaching philosophies. They were not preaching some theories. Whom we preach, but I love it now in the New King James said, him, him, we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, to this end, for this purpose, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. I was thinking that men of old like Paul, there are so many things they are preaching. He said, no. Him we preach. So let's read it from the, the message version very quickly. Bring the message out. Message. This mystery has been kept in the dark for a long time, but now it's out in the open. 27. God wanted everyone. Please, all of you note that. God wanted everyone, not just Jews, to know this rich and glorious secret inside and out. The plan of God, and if I were going to say with boldness, is that 
The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is to make Jesus known. The fresh anointing that is coming upon us is to make Jesus known. God wanted everyone, not just Jews, to know this rich and glorious secret inside and out, regardless of their background. So let me tell you, this message we are talking about has, has no, no problem with the background you are coming from. Your background is not a problem. All that matters for you to encounter Christ, regardless of their background, Regardless of their religious standing, so please note, this message transcends religion. So when we say this revival is coming, this upon is coming, it's not religious. It's the Christ life we are talking about. And don't let anybody intimidate you and say, are you bringing religion? Are you bringing religion? This is not religion. And this is not religious. This is life. This is the purpose that was proposed from the very beginning. Every soul that God allowed to be on earth, they must encounter Christ. Otherwise, they will be going to a hopeless eternity, regardless of their religious standing. And what is the mystery? He said the mystery in a nutshell is just this. All of you, are you saying that? Christ is in you. Therefore, you can look forward to sharing in God's glory. It is Christ in you that is the hope of glory. It is Christ living in you, Christ walking in you, Christ manifesting his own holiness in you that is the basis of the glory we are expecting. Now, therefore, you can look forward to sharing in God's glory. It is that simple. If you want to really preach the gospel, the gospel is simple. Jesus, there is, that is the substance of our message. May the Lord make you to understand that there is no other substance to your message if it is not Christ. If you have not preached Christ, Christ crucified, Christ glorified, the coming Christ, your message is a noise. It has no substance. We preach Christ, warning people not to add to the message. We teach in a spirit of profound common sense so that we can bring each person onto maturity. And what does it mean to be mature? To be mature is to be basic. Christ, no more, no less. Amen. If anybody says, oh, you're a mature Christian, the only parameter of measuring maturity is Christ. Mm. To be mature is to become basic. Don't be, don't be sophisticated. Don't be complicated. If we can't see Christ in your life, if we can't see you beginning to become more and more conformed to Christ, to his likeness, to his way of living, there's no maturity about you. There's no maturity about you. So Brother Paul said, and to be mature is to be basic. Christ. No more, no less. That is what I am working at. That's what I am working so hard at. Day after day. Year after year. Doing my best with the energy God so generously gives me. So when you say you are anointed, when you say the Holy Ghost has come mightily upon your life, this is the assignment the Holy Ghost has come to do. I'm looking forward that in our land, because I live in this land, in Tigland, in Nigeria, I'm looking forward to seeing Christ, Him crucified and glorified and made manifest in the life of people, young people here and there. You start seeing them walking on the street or carrying Christ everywhere. Eh? Then you employ them in your employment, you will see that they are bringing a different lifestyle, Christ's life. When you take them to your office, you just see that your office has changed because the Lord is with them. They will be, they will be greater than Joseph's. And Joseph in the house of Potiphar, you saw how that happened. Now, when it is Christ everywhere, whether in schools, in the classroom, your teachers, you will see Christ. That's what we are praying for. This revival will make Christ to become our lives. 
this outpouring of the Holy Ghost, it will come with miracles, I want you to know. Signs and wonders will follow us. Barren womb shall be a blessed. But all of that was to only glorify one man, Jesus. May God bless you. May the Holy Ghost press this on your heart. As we look forward to where this meeting is concluding tonight, I want you to begin to meditate and say, Lord, if this heaven is opening over my head and you are pouring your spirit upon my life, I can see what to do with it. It is to grow Christ first in me and for me to make Christ known, for me to help others to touch Christ. All positions, all promotion, all appointments that God will allow you to have henceforth is for one purpose, to make Christ known, to make Christ glorified. Paul said, my earnest expectation is that Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. Would you like to pray with me? Would you like us to stop at this point as we call on God together uh, this uh, afternoon? Our time is gone, but we can't do but pray. I want you to pray and say, Lord, let it fall on me. Let it fall on me. Let the fire fall on me. Let your spirit come afresh. Let Christ become more and more revealed to me. Let me become a carrier of Christ's life. Let my life become an explicit manifestation of Christ. Let my experience of Christ become so real that this outpouring, this outpouring will make the land and the nation to be filled with people carrying Christ. I want to see young girls carrying Christ. I want to see students who have come to touch Christ's life and they are saying, yes, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And that will not just be a mere talk. That will be a reality in their own lives. Can you pray and say, Lord, let this revival, let this open heavens, let it centralize Christ first to my own life. Let Christ become my own life, my own pursuit, my own treasure, my own treasure. He said, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. That treasure, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Please pray. Please pray. Whether you are listening to me in French, or you are listening in Spanish, or you are listening in Portuguese, wherever you are, or God is making you to listen to this in Kosa, in Zulu, in Sutu, whatever, whatever language. Whatever language. And I know there is no language in which Christ is not properly expressed. Everywhere. So would you like to say, Lord Jesus, let this become the overwhelming sense of this revival. Let Christ become the central issue for us. The message. The only message. And Jesus only is our message. I love that old hymn that our father sang over and over again. Jesus only is a message. And I found that that song is in Tiv language, is in Yoruba language, it's all languages. That's the song that brought revival in those days. That's the song they sang and every man turned to Christ. But now we are singing, he bought out my bread, he shake my body and all of that. Can you pray and say, God, restore to your church the message of Christ. That this revival will show Christ to men, will bring men to Christ in every respect. Please pray, please pray, please pray, please pray, please pray. Lord, please come. Please come. You said we will see Heavens open, and we see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Lord, I pray this morning that we we'll see Jesus, that we we'll see Jesus, we we'll see you glorified in the in the nations, we we'll see you glorified in the midst of your people. We are asking that we we'll see you glorified in your church, we we'll see you glorified among your people. Lord, we have spoken so much about other things, 
We have preached about other things, other things, other things, and we have let you have scaled among your people. Lord, we repent of this today. And we ask, Lord Jesus, please take your place. Take your place, oh God. Take your place in our midst. Take your place in our lives. Take your place in our pulpit. And as these heavens open, we will see no one else but Jesus. We preach no one else but Jesus. When you will grant miracles, when you grant signs and wonders to follow the word of God, we will not run after signs. We will only use signs to point men to Jesus. We will use it to glorify you. Lord, that's what we are trusting you for, God. I ask that in all centers, everywhere your children are, cause this to become their, their hunger. Hunger to know Jesus. Hunger to become like Jesus. Hunger to carry Jesus. Hunger to preach Jesus. Lord, let Jesus, Jesus only, let him become the emphasis of our time and of our lives. Thank you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Now, permit me to ask. You may have been going from meeting to meeting, but you've not met Jesus. I tell you, if you have not met Jesus, everything will scatter. The Bible says it is in connection with him that all things hold together. You may be wondering, things are not working, and demons are running after you, witches are not letting you rest. Have you come to Jesus? He said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Have you come and he didn't give you rest? Have you genuinely come? You say, I've gone to church, I've gone to that pastor, I've gone to that prophet, I've gone to this one, I've gone to that mountain, I've gone to this mountain, like that sister was giving testimony yesterday. I want to ask you, have you come to the man of Calvary? Have you come to Jesus? Have you come to him who was crucified for you? Have you seen him? Have you seen him? You can't see Jesus and not be delivered. You can't see Jesus and still remain. He said, all those who come to him, he gives them rest. He said, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. You can't come to Jesus and he will not save you. He will save all those who come. And he said, the message is simple. As many as call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. This morning, if you are sitting there, you have been invited somehow, but the reality of your personal deliverance, of your own personal, de- for you to know that, ah, I have found rest. I have found the man of Calvary. I have found solution to my life. It has not happened because you've not come to Jesus. I want to give you a spare right now. And wherever you are, in any place, don't be ashamed to say, Jesus, this revival must bring me to you, to know your purpose, to know your glory. Where are you? Will you raise your right hand and say, Lord, while you are touching others, while you are blessing others, while you are changing people's lives, while you are canceling their debt, while you are removing all the ancestral uh, uh, demonic activity in other lives, do not pass me by. I have gone from one mountain to another valley, but I have not found rest. Yet Jesus said, come to me, I will give you rest. Thank you. If you raise your right hand wherever you are, I would love to pray for you. I would love to speak to God on your behalf. Thank you. As you raise the right hand, please stand on your feet so that we can stand together with you. Let's stand together with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please do so. Don't say, but I've been in church for many years. That's not the point. The point is, have you met him? Have you met him? All the people that Jesus made a promise to, they met him. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, my dear sister. Thank you, dear brother. Wherever you are, please rise and let him see you. Say, Lord, it's you I'm coming to now. I've struggled enough. I've made effort. But it is you. It is you that God has raised for my deliverance. It is you. You are the rock. Eh? I can't be building life without you. So if you ever hear a distance of mine and does not do it, the man who is building his house on the on sand. God bless you. Thank you. If you rise up, 
As you have raised up your right hand, God bless you. Can you step out? Just step out towards the altar and permit me now to pray for you. God bless you. From whichever centers, please keep coming out. Thank you, my dear sister. Thank you, dear brother. Thank you. Thank you. Please walk out. Walk out. I'm not able to see all centers, so as you are coming, just know that you are coming to the Lord. And the Lord to whom you are coming is faithful. He said, to whom coming as unto the rock. Mm. You are coming to the rock, the rock of ages. Thank you, sister. You are coming. You are not coming to ordinary thing. You are coming to him who holds the key for your deliverance. He holds the key for your deliverance. In fact, the key of hell and death is in his hand. Even if anybody said they have locked you up many, many years, he has the key to release you. Just come to him. Just come. Thank you. I want you to stand up and come. God bless you. God bless you. If you are still coming, please join those that are already standing and coming out. Just come with us. Just join us everywhere. All centers, please do that now. That lady, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you are coming. You have a space to need and do so. Whatever God allows you to do. Jesus is standing at the door. Jesus is saying, give me space. Say, behold, I knock at the door. If you open the heart, I will come in. He will come in. He will come in. He will give you rest. He will change your story. Things will change from this afternoon. God bless you. God bless you. We can't be talking of open heavens and you are refusing him. Who himself is the door? Say, I'm the door of the sheep. He is the door. He has the key. Is the one that opens and no man can shut. And when he shuts a door against sickness, against the devil, against your life, that door is permanently shut. The devil can't come in again. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shall I pray right now? I'd like to pray, please. I'd like to pray. All those that are standing up, step forth your hand to heaven and join me in prayer. I just wanted to say a simple word to him because he's standing by your side. He's the one that said, come to me. To me. It is to him you have come. Say, I'm coming to you, Lord Jesus. And I'm putting my life in your hand. I am handing over to you. I have tried. I'm tired of trying. But since you say you will give me rest, I hand over to you now. Lord Jesus, step into my life. Give me a new heart and come and stay in my heart. Make me your own. I'm told that there's a book of life that you are keeping. Please put my name in your book from this afternoon. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Now, if you have done that, Jesus is going to fulfill his promise. No one comes to him and that man is disappointed. Say, they looked up to him and their eyes, their faces were lightened. Say, as many as call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Something is happening to you today, and it will be permanent. Father, thank you for all our brothers, our friends. They have come around, they have been in meetings, but they have not met you. They have been in church, but not met you. They have gone around, they have touched people, they have touched this and that. They have not touched you. That's why their matter has not been resolved. This day, O oh God, as they have come, honor your word in their lives. Because you are the rock that God has set up. And whosoever will build upon this rock shall be saved. Lord, this afternoon, O oh God, as they are coming to you, please take them in. Forgive them. Let the blood you shed at Calvary, let it speak for them. Let the blood cleanse them today. And you say your iniquity and your sin, I will remember no more. Father, wipe it off. The Bible says it is in you we have redemption. Even the forgiveness of sins. Lord, let it happen now. Let them see the cleansing power in the blood of Jesus. And let them see the, 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 the power of deliverance from the power of darkness. Let it come upon them now. Now, Lord, I demand that every ordinance that is written against any of them, wherever their names were buried in the kingdom of darkness, you that have the key, open their door now. Open the gates for them to come in. 
And I ask, Lord, that from this afternoon, the well of salvation will be dug in their spirit. You said to that woman, the water that I shall give you will become a well in your heart, welling up, springing up to everlasting life. Let there be a refreshing coming upon them. And God, some of them, because they have not known you, Satan has made a cheat of them. Satan has kicked them up and down like football. Some of them, they are regular customers in hospitals and all of that. This afternoon, by the word of God and by the authority in the name of Jesus, we speak to them right now. We release you from that bondage. We command that sickness, we command that oppression. Pack your load and go in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Even if you are dead, he will live. Lord, I'm asking that dead things in their lives, dead situations in their lives, let it receive.